Do you have any other tips for dealing with this kind of demand barking? Um, and it sounds like really she's having this issue a lot towards the other dog in the house. Mm. Yeah, it's, I mean, first of all, I, I feel ya. I've been there. I used to live on a cattle ranch uh, and we, we had like six corgis. And so they are barky dogs. Some dogs are just, you know, more vocal than others. So I think the first step is all is <clears throat> accepting the fact that it's not all you, right? Because a lot of owners want to like, I'm not doing enough and it's my fault and I'm not raising the dog right. And I, my, my, and, and we like to, it's easy. It's a lot easier to put blame on ourselves, but dog to dog relationship stuff is tricky. I think it's always the trickiest because they're having their own conversation and we want it to look a certain way, right? We're like, I find it rude when my dog does this to the other dog, but yet that other dog doesn't sit, really seem to have a problem with it. So first step overall acceptance. Um, so she's doing the recall thing. What else is she doing? She's, she's including a, a, a quiet command. Did you say? Yep. And we, uh, yeah. So she said she's, she's telling quiet. I don't know. And Bo, maybe you can comment here. I don't know how much the, the command quiet has been taught that so that the new dog would actually know what it means versus like saying quiet and then hoping the dog goes, what? And then we go, yay, good girl. And then maybe the dog sort of figures it out. Right, right, right. Um, so I'm not hundred percent sure there, but yeah, she did say she's tried a quiet command and, and that it kind of works. Yeah. In those situations, if I have the opportunity to be like, put on your galoshes, we're going for a hike is probably my favorite option if I can. Um, otherwise at a young age, it, uh, it can be tricky because they're clearly like surge of energy. And so it's that, that energy really needs to be redirected somewhere to a bone, to a this, to a that. You just want to make sure with your timing that you're not teaching the dog to go over a mess with the other dog. Click, treat. We we obviously want to avoid that. What do you say, Ty? I, th I think the recall thing is not a bad idea, Bo. Um, and, you know, I would say a lot of times, you know, four month old dogs, pretty young. And um, I would just, I would say, you know, stick with it. Like consistency here is probably going to be key. And it, it may not go away until she starts to mature more. But if you're consistent through those periods, like I always tell my clients as a dog's maturing, you know, training is going to wax and wane, their reliability is going to wax and wane. And, you know, they're going to go through maturity stages where they push back and resist against us. And the most important thing is just that we stay consistent through all those things. Like the dog can, can try to do different things and try to find different opportunities, but let's just let's just try and stay as consistent as we can be on our end. She's also asking whether like uh, some kind of correction, like a shaker, like a shaker can or something like that could be helpful. Um, I think corrections can be okay. Somewhat depending on the age of the dog. Like I don't do a lot of correcting with really young dogs. Yeah. Um, especially if we're talking about like, I guess what sort of intensity we're referring to with corrections. Cause there's some shades of gray there. Um, like a shaker can or a little bit of noise is not necessarily that big of a correction to most dogs, but if you have a really sound sensitive dog, it can be um, like, it can, it can really rattle them a little bit, which is unlikely but, with this Corgi that's like barking. And, you know, yeah, going yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But if it helps to interrupt and gives you that opportunity to redirect, that can be generally a good thing. 